So today we're going to be saving a lot of money. We're also going to be performing really, really good here. Um, and again, this is something where it's a topic that's brought up in my comments all the time. Uh, not only do people want to save money on a fragrance, but they also want that fragrance to perform good. And we're in one of those situations when it comes to this hobby where in a lot of instances, you may have to spend more money to get a higher performing scent. If you're really prioritizing performance above everything else, a lot of times you're going to shell out some big bucks, at least relatively speaking. But that's not always the case. I mean, there are some cheapies that perform really good. But if you want, let's say, something that smells like Sauvage, but you also want Sauvage-like performance, you don't always have that many options other than getting the real thing and spending the money. So what we're going to be focusing on are clones of popular fragrances that already do perform good, but you know the clones themselves will actually perform good as well, if that makes sense. Now, so for this video here, I think all these are going to fall under... $40 for the most part, um, some significantly less than that, some right there on the line. And I do think we have one that's maybe $60 or so, but it's still kind of a clone and it can be cheaper than the other alternative. So we'll get to that when we get there, but I will drop links to all of these down below to discounters. So that way, if you want to pick these up and save yourself a lot of money, you can do so by using those links. All right, let's get this one kicked off with uh, a very, very popular summertime DNA. Now, this DNA is something I'm a huge fan of. I love the Eau de Parfum of it. I love the Parfum. Uh, I even like the EDT, okay? And that doesn't tell you much, but this will. It is uh, Latafa Fakar Eau de Parfum. Now, this is a clone of Yves Saint Laurent Y Eau de Parfum. YSLY EDP, most of you know it. It's got a bunch of aromatics in the mid with a nice apple up top, a ton of amberwood in the base. It's kind of their take on a blue fragrance, but it's done in a different way, a little bit more sweet, uh, kind of more aromatic like I had mentioned. It's just a different twist. And like I mentioned, I really, really like that DNA. Love the Eau de Parfum, love the Parfum, like I said. I just think it's a great smelling scent that's very uplifting and puts me in a great mood. The one issue that a lot of people and myself kind of have with that one is it's not affordable. You're looking at $100 even on discounters. And so that's where this one comes in. Now, I can't remember exactly what I ended up paying for this one, although I know it wasn't anywhere close to 100 bucks. So you could save yourself a lot of money with going in this direction, and um, it's very close to why Eau de Parfum. The opening is a little bit different, though. Uh, it's got a little bit more of a mature feel to it off the top, which a lot of people will benefit from because um, the opening of Y Eau de Parfum is very youthful. And as you would imagine, it's an Eau de Parfum concentration with great, great performance. Again, we're looking at stuff that lasts over eight hours. It's kind of the criteria for this one, and you'll have no problem hitting that mark and beyond with this. So that one there, very summertime oriented, unlike the next one, Insurrection 2 Wild by Rayanne Traditions. So this one here is going to be a clone of Mugler's Pure Havan, okay? Now that one there was kind of a limited edition type of deal, and it's one of those things where it started to pick up a lot of hype as it was kind of on the way out, and now you really can't find it anywhere. Um, but you can get this, and I highly encourage you to get Insurrection 2 Wild. It is very, very good. It's got honey, it's got tobacco, Nice tonka bean in here. Again, we're going in opposite directions. This is going to be more wintertime appropriate, of course, fall and wintertime. But it just is a very, very nice take on that DNA for a fraction of the price. And for what it's worth, the presentation on this is actually really nice. Eight hours is no sweat, no problem for this one. Um, it's one that's going to hold up really well in the cold winter air, all of that good stuff. If you want performance at a low price and you want a unique tobacco honey scent also at a low price, Check this one out. Now we're kind of moving back into more of a signature scent type of thing with this next one. It's Roberto Capucci's uh, Loam Suave. Now I've already shot a review on this one, whether that is out when you're watching this, I'm not really sure yet, but I've covered it in full detail. So rest assured, if you haven't seen it yet, it will be coming out. Sauvage Clone, a very, very impressive Sauvage Clone for only $20. Now this is kind of Sauvage and Prada Lunarosa Carbon combined, except that this one came out before Carbon. This was in 2016, Carbon was in 2017, and Sauvage EDT was in 2015. This was right there in the middle, 
they got in on this quick. And again, the crazy part is you don't really hear much about this one at all. It's a really good performer coming in consistently on me, just above that eight hour mark. Uh, again, it's that Sauvage DNA, but kind of carbon uh, nuanced, whereas I guess in this situation, carbon would have taken some inspo from this one. It's just smoother, it's more refined, and I think it's really, really solid all around. And it's also for me, the best Sauvage clone or alternative that I've ever smelled. Great, great stuff for a super dirt cheap price. All right, so we're kind of moving our way over to everyone's favorite here, as if Sauvage already wasn't super uh, frowned upon nowadays in the community. This one here is really gonna rile some people up. It's Afnan Supremacy, not only intense. Now, of course, you guys are on a clone video here, so you're probably okay with seeing about this, but you know, all the other people who kind of have a complex for popular stuff like this have probably clicked off because they're probably not going to be into clones. So this one here is really more than anything more of a Hasavat clone by Nishane. However, because it does have similarities to Hasavat quite a bit with that oak moss and black currant and heavy sweet pineapple, it also does get tied into the Aventus DNA as well. And it definitely has Aventus nuances for sure, just as Hasavat would. So it only makes sense. It's kind of full circle here. Now this is an extract to parfum. It's a really good performer on my skin. It does great every single time. Um, it wears like a true parfum. So, I mean, it's, it's rich, it's heavy. When you get this on your skin, it's not going anywhere. It leaves a super strong trail in the air. And again, if you want that Hasavat smell, that rich take on Aventus, where Aventus is kind of, in some ways, kind of airy and wispy and kind of light and bright. This is rich and heavy and sweet and just a different experience altogether. If that's what you're after for an affordable price, go with this way right here. Very nice stuff. All righty, let's move over to Latafa Sucrat. I never really know for sure. S-U-Q-R-A-A-T. It's an eau de parfum, and this one here is a clone of Aqua de Jo Profumo. So I've already covered this one in a full review, and I touched on this in the review that I didn't know what this was going into it. Uh, I picked it up on Fragrance Buy, and uh, up against the title of it, they just had in parentheses, Profumo Twist. And so I didn't know if they were talking about Armani Code Profumo, or you know, Aqua de Jo Profumo or some other Profumo. I wasn't really for sure until I got it in. And as soon as I smelled it, I'm like, oh yeah, Aqua de Jo Profumo. They nailed that grassy green opening. It dries down to that kind of smoky, mysterious smell. Uh, really, really solid clone. And there really aren't too many clones of that fragrance out there these days. Uh, even though it's been out for a while, it's still expensive. Not everyone wants to pay for it. That one is a parfum. Great performer, this one's an EDP, but it still gets above that eight hour mark. And for the price, for the quality, for the performance, for the compliment factor, definitely worth a pickup if you wanna save some money. Now we're sticking with that theme and moving over to a Zaro Chrome Extreme. Kind of an unintentional rhyme there. So the reason why I say that is because this one smells very similar to Aqua de Jo Profondo. Now Profondo and Profumo are worlds apart, so um, you know, having both in your collection or having Chrome Extreme and that Latafa in your collection is not gonna be redundant. There's not gonna be any clash here. Uh, this features notes of orange and uh, lavender, sea notes, cashmere, and all of that stuff. It has that kind of mineral water smell that Profondo has. You get that orange opening up top. It's just a different take on an aquatic scent. And I think it's really, really impressive, you know, because you kind of get to this point, especially in the Aqua de Jo line, where it's like, what else can they do? And they came out with something that just knocked it out of the park yet again. And if you don't want to spend profondo prices, you can get this one for about 40 bucks. Let's go over to a Creed clone up next. Yet another Creed clone, kind of. Well, like I said, that that uh, Afnan more has of that, but again, Aventus is thrown in there. This one's straight up Creed. Uh, actually, well, to some people, I guess not. It's Armoff Tresnui, uh, or Trenui. And the reason why I say, eh, not really, kind of, because uh, people will say that this smells like cool water, uh, eau de toilette, of course. And, uh, you know, people will also say that cool water, eau de toilette, smells a lot like green Irish tweed. I never have gotten that. Uh, it's just, for me, cool water, again, talking eau de toilette, has always just been kind of 
headache inducing. And I don't say that in a way like I'm trying to rip the scent apart. I'm just being honest and truthful. Like cool water EDT has never worked well for me on my skin. Green Irish Tweed has for a long time. And this one here, Trinui, also works really well. And it gets very, very close to Green Irish Tweed. So you get that lemon verbena, you get that little bit of iris, that nice sparkly ambroxan touch, typical Creed fashion. It is just a classic gentleman's fragrance that literally you cannot go wrong with. What did, when did Green Irish Tweed come out? 1985 or something. And it still smells like it could just have rolled off the, the factory right now. I mean, this DNA is timeless. And if you don't wanna spend the Creed price, which I don't really blame you, you can go with this one for about 20 bucks and you're gonna get above that eight hour mark every single time. Uh, we are looking at an Eau de Toilette out of this one too, but it performs like an EDP and it performs better than the Creed for a lot of people. All right, running down to the end, we have Lalique White in Black. Now this is going to be a clone of Parfums de Marly Late In. So you get notes of cinnamon, apple, all that, that typical sweetness, that nice lavender clean touch in here. I mean, it, it really does nail late and down to a T. Now you could have also put in uh, Al Haramain's Detour Noir, and that's also a great option. Um, I didn't want to put both of them in here because redundancy issues, right? Um, kind of like how the Aventus thing could have been redundant somewhat uh, if I put two Aventus clones in here, so I didn't do that. Uh, I was trying to spread it out as much as I could. Um, so I just stuck with uh, the Lalique, haven't talked about in a while, but if you have the Al Haramain, then you're good to go as well. That one also performs really good. And so does this. Eight hours is not gonna be an issue with this one. And if you want Leighton on a budget, this is one great option for you. So second to last fragrance, we have one from a relatively, I guess, under the radar designer brand at least you know, in the grand scheme of things. This one's gonna be Narciso Rodriguez and it's gonna be Blue Noir Parfum. So I call this a clone because it is strikingly similar to actually three fragrances. Givenchy Gentleman Eau de Parfum, Dior Homme Intense, and Valentino Womo Intense. Not necessarily in that order either. It's kind of like a mashup of all of them in, in some ways, but it's, it's actually the freshest of all. So I've always kind of, described it as if you're just getting into it, go with um, Gentleman Eau de Parfum, if you're just getting into Iris and you want kind of a sweet Iris. And then step up to the Valentino, then step up to the Dior. Now it's to the point where I would say, start with the uh, Narciso, you know, get Blue Noir Parfum, start here. Now look, it does have that freshness going on as per you would expect from the line, but the, the way the Iris is used in here and the kind of that chocolatey ambrette sweetness, it gets to the point further on in the dry down where it's very similar to those others that I mentioned. More so kind of the Valentino and somewhat of the Gentleman, I would say. It still doesn't get nearly as um, lipsticky as the Dior, but you're, you get my point here. Heavily, heavily inspired by those. And uh, for what it's worth, I think it's worth owning. It's a really, really good scent. Very entry level into the whole iris world and a great place to start. And yeah, again, it's a parfum. It's got great performance. Eight hours is no problem. We're gonna end this one with a $14 scent. This one is Latafa Ejazzy. And this is just the gold one. This is not uh, the silver version, which is a Lanouis de Lome kind of blue electric cologne. This is just this version here. This is the standard one. That's an eau de parfum. I think I just spit all over the place. Maybe not though. <laughs> you guys probably didn't see it because I don't think it actually happened. I th it almost did but I caught it, okay? Now, this one is interesting. Uh, it's just super heavy-handed on the amber. If you look on Fragrantica, it kind of gets compared to Jeremy Fragrance, uh, Fragrance One Office for Men, and I've smelled this many, many times, and I've smelled Office for Men many, many times as well, and I don't really think they're all that similar. Uh, Office is much fresher. This is not fresh, really. It, it's very amber heavy, like I said, a good dose of sweetness. Now, what this one does smell like, though, is Ferragamo, Ferragamo, you know, that one there. Kind of smells like that one, and then also Ferragamo uh, leather, intense leather, I believe, from the same line, uh, similar to those. And also, it's just kind of a mashup of a lot of other, you know, popular amber forward fragrances for men. You can go nose blind to this 
like that. At least I can. So you gotta be careful when you're testing this one. Uh, make sure you get it on your skin. Make sure you wear it several times. You may get it on your skin. You might think it's gone in 10 minutes. It's not. It, this is eight hours easily. Uh, really strong performer here that again, can make you go nose blind if you're not careful. But for $15, it's a really nice compliment getter. Like it just works, you know? I think it's heavy on the ISOE Super as well just aroma chemical heavy. It's just a concoction for compliments and it's dirt cheap. Alrighty guys, there you go. That is going to be 10 fragrance clones that just crush it in terms of performance. And for the most part here, these are all cheap. I think the only one that got a little bit overpriced was the Narciso, um, but again, everything else very affordable. And also the Narciso in comparison to most others out there and also compared to what it is similar to is the cheapest of those. Links will be down below. That's gonna do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.